This is the Oh My case. Uh, this has a lot of flamboyant looking uh, insects. You've got beetles, butterflies, um, tree bugs, you have a cicada, just some really cool stuff. Um, and uh, this is cool. About like uh, 17 breeds of cicadas, but only like four of them have survived over the years that they've been around. And this is the, the 14th, the 5th, the 7th, and the 10th. Um, this is when they're going to come out. Here are cicadas that have come out throughout the years. Um, uh, over here we have uh, Asian longhorn beetle, which is a um, invasive species. And then get that here. Here's some conway bulls. Um, this is talking about the transmission of the plague with the fleet. Uh, and then over here we have some. We put, a, uh, we put water and then we put a drop of soap in it. The drop of soap breaks the surface tension. So, um, and these are. Uh, these are samples that are taken from Ohio. Um, basically, these are all have none of these have hymenoptera in them because hymenoptera have all been taken out. Hymenoptera are wasps, and uh, because uh, experts here are interested in hymenoptera, these are some of the biggest wasps. Um, they what they do is that they uh, the tarantula comes out of its uh, den or whatever it lives in its cave or something. Uh, not cave, sorry. And then the tarantula comes out, and then the tarantula wasp of the hawk um, comes up and stings it and paralyzes it. And uh, then once it is paralyzed, it is still alive. And then, but the tarantula hawk then lays its egg on the tarantula, mm -hmm. and then the eggs hatch, mm -hmm. and out come the uh, larva. And uh, then the larva gradually consumes the tarantula, and it carefully avoids eating any vital organs, so the tarantula can live for months while being eaten alive. And then, the, so this is how the life cycle goes right here. We have the European paper ones. And uh, with that, we have um, we have hornets here, and uh, and then the common wasp, and then it just shows how here's European paper wasp and how they differ. It's at the bottom. Right here. Um, it, it showed up, yeah, it showed up uh, in the late 1970s. It was first found in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and since then it has gone from coast to coast. It um, comes out. It is one of the few species uh, uh, early spring. And it, uh, so, so it is able to um, take out those garden pests. This is really cool. Right? Uh -huh. You can actually see all of them now. You have the uh, red uh, velvet ants and the thistle down vel velvet ants. And then to your left right here, there are um, cicadas right there. And then there's the cicada killer. Now there's a cycle of life here. The cicada, the cicada killers uh, search through, um, through trees. And then they uh, they sting this they sting the cicadas and they bring the cicadas back to their larvae so that the cicadas can you know, the uh, the baby cicada the larva cicada killers can then uh, eat the cicada and then the velvet the velvet ants which you can see over here then uh, they are common predators of the cicada killers so there's just a circle of death there. Uh, this is my first one. It is the Agrilus planipennis ferma, or the emerald ash borer. Uh, it is from part of the family Mucrestidae, which is a menstrual beetle. Uh, as you can, uh, it has, it's very narrow, slender. Uh, it's longish over here to behind you. We have zoom in right there. We have the actual emerald ash borers. As you can see, they're very small. They're slender. They have this blunt head. And um, there's fine. I'm moving firewood. This is a, an outdated map. It's from May 2005. And during May 2005, there were um, I mean, obviously it was only mainly in Michigan, in Maryland, and Ohio. But now it is in it is in seven states. It is in um, it is in Maryland, uh, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Illinois, and Indiana. Uh, it moves very fast. Uh, naturally, it only moves about a half a mile per year, but due to uh, human influence, because ash trees are a large part of Michigan economy, a lot of ash uh, a lot of the ash wood was moved to these different Midwestern uh, states, and uh, all. A uh, study by Michigan State University in 2005 said that um, only that the emerald ash borer should have only moved about 131 square miles, but instead they moved 13,000 square miles because of uh, human moving wood. 
Uh, right here in this picture, we have uh, a close-up on the mandibles. And you, can see, uh, you can see that the fact that they have that ear is chewing. The actual adults only chew on the uh, ash leaves while the larva um, chew on, uh, uh, eat out the phloem. Right here, we have a picture of the larva, right there, the one on the right. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go back to slide sorter, and so right here, um, the, uh, there's actually uh, native boars, native ash boars, and um, they tend to eat uh, xylem tissue, while emerald ash boars are phloem feeders, so, um, which means that the uh, native boars, they, um, they bore through um, more, uh, more inside of the um, tree, while the emerald ash borers feed right underneath the bark, so it is easier to, to have nano detection actually in this case. Um, here we just have showing um, the um, native emerald ash, not the native emerald ash borers, but native ash borers. The uh, the frass is um, is pushed out from the tree, while with emerald ash borer the frass is left in the um, the holes. Um, also, you can see. A difference. There's no pupil casing on the outside of the holes for the emerald ash borer and for, clay, and for the uh, native borers. There are um, there's often pupil cases protruding out. Um, there's just differences between uh, pupa. Oh, right here it shows the main differences between the exit holes. So the exit holes of the ash borer of the emerald ash borer, it's D-shaped, it's three millimeters. Uh, why and then the um, banded ash clear wing and the redhead ash borer, which are the two common ash borers, the native ash borers, they have um, about twice sorry, the size of sorry, they have about twice the size of um, twice the width, and they're both red. Here we have another uh, native ash borer. As you can see, these native ash borers, are, their numbers are limited because they have natural predators and they have uh, diseases that attack them, while the emerald ash borer does not. The emerald ash borer showed up in 2002 and now there's no, um, there's no form of uh, protection. Let me just go through other ones. Uh,